Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Rubble Free. In today's video, we are going to learn about the first order rule learning and also about the FOIL algorithm, okay? F O I L algorithm and the subject of machine learning. So before getting into the video, let me tell you something. If you're having your exam scheduled nearby, just let me know the date of your exam along with your college name in the comment section so that I can make videos according to your exam syllabus and by your exam date, okay? So before this, I suggest you to watch the video about the sequential covering algorithm where uh, the learning set of rules sequential covering algorithm, that video is there, right? That this the previous one of this video. So first watch that so you'll understand it more better and it is not as simple as the sequential covering algorithm. You need to be more concentrated towards the video to understand it. Okay. First thing is you will be implementing implementing this with the help of the uh, prolog. Okay. In prolog we will be using the horn clauses. So what do you mean by horn clauses? Horn clauses is nothing but simply simply you can say single literal is placed in uh, head of the rule. So you use only single literal. In the head of the rule, you'll be using only single literal. That is what horn clauses actually mean. Okay, so first order logic is much expressive than the propositional logic. Okay, so the reason why you are using uh, first order logic even after having propositional logic is this is more expressive. Okay, and there are also some other advantages. I'll tell you. It allows a finer grain of specification and reasoning. You know what finer grain, right? detailing detailing is more in case of finer grain finer grain when compared to the coarse grain coarse grain was not having so much of detailing right so fine grain will have a lot of uh, detailing and specification and reason reasoning okay for example let us take we have daughter of x comma y okay so this daughter of x comma y in order to represent the relationship daughter of x comma y how we do it using the propositional logic and how we do that using the um, you know this uh, first order logic i'll be telling you so that you can understand the difference so where x comma y can be any values like it can be mother name mother father male female okay fine now the training examples are represented as the person one person two target attribute okay we are having person one person two and the target attribute okay and here we have taken person one as name one and we have taken person one as name and person two as the uh, father okay uh, sorry we have taken mother also yeah we have taken oh sorry sorry i'm sorry uh, we have taken um, i'm really sorry for the confusion uh, i got confused see this is the person one this is the person two and this is the target attribute okay person one person two and the target attribute and you'll be having all these things name mother father male and female okay so here uh, name one is equal to and mother one is equal to you uh, father one uh, and male one female one name two like that you have written the uh, condition okay and then daughter one comma two is equal to true you have written two conditions and for that you have written daughter one comma uh, um, two is equal to true okay this is in case of what it is in the case of first order rules or it is in the case of proposition logic it is in the the case of proposition logic so when you are expressing some something with proposition logic you will be doing it in this way okay but with this example but with this propositional logic what you can do is you can only define only few rules you can only general generalize only few rules not all the rules okay so then uh, using the first order rule what do we do uh, if father one is equal to Bob and uh, name two is equal to Bob and female uh, one is equal to true. So this is how you represent it using the uh, sorry. This is not first order representation. So this is how you represent it using the first order. Okay. So from the first order rule, you'll be representing it in this way. So now you may get a confused confusion like what father is, what daughter is, what is this Bob 23 and all you're getting confusion, right? So here all these are the terms and expressions that is you will be uh, representing the expressions with the help of these terms. Okay. For example, uh, constant. So what do you have in an expression? in an expression you have constant variable uh, symbols you have connectivities you have quantifiers and so on so constants are nothing but the bob 23 bob is a name it doesn't change 23 is what it is age so even it will also not change and variables are xyz variables are the values which keep on changing so xyz are the variables and the predicate symbols are the female and father so what is about predicate symbols is they can only have either a uh, false or true as a value sorry either true or false as values of uh, uh, predicates okay predicate uh, predicate symbols and then comes the function symbols and these function symbols will take only constants only constants um, values are accepted 
okay and then comes the connectivity or and implication anything can be taken as connectivity and quantifiers you know what is this right for all and this is uh, belongs to sorry not belongs to so uh, these are the quantifiers which shows uh, which shows some part or the whole part or what for everything or only for something or for nothing like that these are the quantifiers which show you the quantity yeah, this is about the first order rule learning and i'm sorry if you're really having any confusion i tried to explain it uh, in a better way but still if you're having any confusion just excuse me for that okay so let's close this and let's move over to the f o i l algorithm okay what do you mean by f o i l first order inductive learning okay it is first order inductive learning f is first o is order i is inductive and l is learning right and this is an extension of sequential learning so here comes the main confusion between the sequential covering algorithm and the foil algorithm that okay i said it is an extension right even though it is an extension it has got some differences between the sequential and the foil algorithm okay so we are going to discuss about one similarity and one difference and the similarity is it will learn one rule at a time and removes the positive example in sequential covering algorithm what we have done first we uh, what do we do we will be learning one rule each rule at a time and we will be uh, segregating all the positive values and we will be removing all the positive values right the same thing will happen in the sequential cover uh, sorry in the foil algorithm as well okay in the foil algorithm also you're going to use the same step but what is the difference between sequential and foil so here the difference is it will try to learn the rule that predict when target literal is true so only when the target literal is true at that time only it will learn that suppose uh, you have learned something you have learned some condition or you have learned an example and at the end of the day it came to be false right so then what happens whatever you have learned till now was all waste right so in the same way here the difference between the sequential covering and the foil is sequential covering will be doing the same thing it will be learning the entire thing irrespective of it is true or false but here what foil will do it will learn the rule only when it is true only when the target literal is true only when the target literal is true it will learn only when the literal is true okay now um actually foil is an algorithm right so what it does it will search its hypothesis so it will search its hypothesis by using two nested loops okay with the help of two loops it will be searching its hypothesis number 1 is the outer loop and number 2 is the inner loop in the outer loop what you will do you will be using the disjunctive function you know what disjunctive is right or in the inner loop what you will be doing you will be using conjunction conjunctive function which has nothing but the and okay so and this inner loop will also give you the uh, from the most general hypothesis to the most specific hypothesis it will take okay so here in inner loop as i said it is conjunctive so what happens in, in conjunctive is on each and every iteration it keeps on adding a rule so based on the condition it will be checking it will be check uh, checking in number of iterations and in each and every iteration it will be adding a rule okay it will be adding a rule done so this is about the foil algorithm and now let's see what is the performance of foil algorithm how do you define the performance and what are the terms involved in it so foil gain of l comma r is equal to t of log p1 by p1 plus n1 to the base 2 minus log p0 by p0 plus n0 to the base 2 so what is this p p1 p uh, p0 n0 l t everything i'll tell you l is the candidate literal that is to be added to r so what is r it is a rule set okay uh, in the previous sequential covering algorithm i said you what is r a uh, rule set or rule list you can say so l is a candidate literal that you are planning to add into r okay r may be an empty one or it may already have some other literals or whatever it is you are planning to add l into r so that is l okay and what is p not number of positive bindings of r how many bindings how many positive bindings r is having before adding l see try to understand p not is before adding l okay and n not is the number of negative bindings that the r is having again only r with before adding l okay now p1 is what number of positive bindings of r plus l what do you mean by this after adding l to r okay so after adding l also the number of positive bindings whether there are more or less okay that and n1 n1 also number of negative bindings of r after adding the l so number of uh, negative bindings of r plus l you can take okay and t is the number of positive bindings of r also covered by r plus l that is common you can say simply okay positive bindings of r 
you need to consider also those positive bindings are to be covered by r plus l as well when you take r and l combinedly okay so this is all about this video i hope i have uh, explained it in a clear way to you but i, I tried my maximum actually uh, but still if any problem or if any confusion just um, you know try to watch the video again so maybe you'll be understanding then and if you're still having any doubts just let me know in the comment section i'll definitely try to clear all your doubts for sure and if you want me to make any other topics or any other videos let me know that also so that i can make uh if i can and thanks for watching the video till the end if you're not yet subscribed to my channel do subscribe and also hit the bell icon so that you can receive notifications whenever i post a new video